We're back, and I'm healthy as a horse. A uh, horse with cancer, that is. Giddy up! Hello, Jew. Uh, hello, Andreas. First of all, let's address the hat, shall we? I got a nice hat from, from some fans of ours. It's actually uh, my family, so they're sort of obliged to be fans, I guess. My, my cousin, uh, Kathy, who you've seen on, on, I think, some Facebook posts. Kathy Cooper? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> her and her boyfriend, Ron, sent me this nice hat from Canada. And it's quite fitting because it has one ball. Nice. And a big C. C for cancer. Exactly. Ah, very nice. The only problem is it's not Canada here. So I'm melting in this hat. So I'm going to take it off and wait for uh, colder times. Fair, fair, fair. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm, like, soaked with sweat. Uh, I can't. But I can see your t-shirt says, stupid is spraying. It is. As fast as cancer or in, uh, slower? Probably faster. I think there are more stupid people than people with cancer yes, in the world. Yes, that's not a guess. That's a fact. <laughs> We've talked about that quite often, though, so... But that's mainly because we don't like people. <laughs> At least I don't. Yeah. Yeah. I like some people. Anywho, we're back in the game. We've been off for uh, what seems like years, months, weeks, eons. What's the reason, Joe? Cancer. Ah, uh, that old chestnut. <laughs> yeah, I use that card. I don't use it too often. No, but I mean, stuff happened. We, we <coughs> tried to record this a couple of times, and then I was under the weather a bit last week, and, uh, well, finally we're here. All right. We're recording this actually exactly, I think, three weeks after the last episode came out. And uh, yeah, it's a morning episode again, so let's see if we're funny. Yeah, I was out drinking heavily last night, so uh, this will be a hoot. Oh, well, that's uh, at least... But you don't get hangovers, right? I don't. So you should be perfectly not good today. Yeah, but I might look puffy and, and weird. <laughs> oh, so your face gets a hangover, but your brain doesn't. Well, my face has never been uh, a work of art before. <laughs> So adding <laughs> gallons of straight liquor won't help the puffiness. Just call me Puff Daddy. <laughs> Okie dokie. Or Lil Dicky, which I've, more people have started calling me Lil Dicky lately because they know you call me Lil Dicky. I do that sometimes, and it has nothing to do with the, the, the rapper Lil Dicky. No. It's just because you're a, a Lil Dicky. <laughs> I mean, what can I say? <laughs> Look at you. What else am I going to call you? This is fair. This is very fair. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. All right. So, um, you're, uh, you're bald. That's new. I'm bald. That's not that new. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, uh, did you lose your eyebrows? I did, actually. No, no, no I've, I've got a couple of hairs left, but they've basically disappeared. It's, uh, it's quite surprising. I didn't even really notice until it was suddenly, oh, I don't have eyebrows. And I have, like, basically no hair left on my legs either. Okay. I could I could become a, a cyclist. Finally. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> this is this is the one thing my... you've been waiting for. <laughs> hey, it's my I'm doing trying to become Lance Armstrong. <laughs> I have one ball, I'm aerodynamic. Now I just have to find a doctor who'll give me lots of dope to make me go faster. Yeah, you can do that. Are you a, have you ever been a, a biker? Not a biker biker, but like a bicyclist? Well, it depends what you mean by a bicyclist. I, I, I like I've often used a bicycle. But in Switzerland you have People who go on their bike, and then you have people who go on their bike, but they think they're real cyclists, and a lot of people do this, and they've got a professional bike, and they've got all the clothes, and they've got everything, and, and then they go biking for probably 20 minutes or something. <laughs> but I don't do that. I'm guessing you're going to blame the cancer again? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> all right. But so yeah, last time, the, episode, the last episode came out, just when I'd started round three of chemo. Yes. The new round. Exactly. Round three, which at the time I thought might be the last round, but we'll see in a minute that it's not going to be. But so uh, maybe just a quick recap of how the chemo works. I'm hooked up for three days to uh, Philippe, to the IV stand, mm -hmm. mostly getting water. But then for like on the first day, about five or six hours of chemical products. Day two, about two hours of chemical products. And day three, two hours of chemical products again. And most of the time, I can walk around with my buddy, Philippe, go about the hospital, do whatever I want, except when I have the chemo products, because they can't be out in the light and just so nothing happens. And it's quite funny, because you can tell which products are chemo, because when I'm getting saline solution, it's just a bottle. 
hanging on my stand, and all the chemo ones come in these bright yellow bags, meaning be careful, obviously. Mm-hmm. So it's quite funny. Then if I do walk around after the chemo, when, when the bags, the, I'm no longer getting the chemical products, but they still leave the empty bags on there. And so it's quite funny. I walk through the hospital. It's like a, a big light that tells all the medical staff, I have cancer, I have cancer, I have cancer. You get in an elevator and they say hello, and then they look at the yellow bag and they're like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But yeah, it's funny. When one of my nurses, I had a great nurse who's becoming specialized in oncology. So she's really interesting, interested rather. She asked me a ton of questions about how things go. And at one point, another nurse made a slight mistake hooking up the IV stand and some of it dripped out. They obviously have big gloves on, so it wasn't a problem. But then I asked, yeah, what happens if you, if you like drop one of these bags? Mm-hmm. And she said, well, it's happened. She could remember once about eight years ago. It's the only time. But there's a whole big protocol. As soon as that happens, it gets cordoned off. There's a big washing protocol because they are a dangerous product. So it's like Outbreak, the cancer edition. Exactly. But so, uh, yeah, and it, it's quite nice having, I mean, all the nurses are great. But this, I had the same nurse for the three days of that, that chemo t- taking care of me. And she's really interested and really good at it because that's what she sort of wants to, wants to do. Also, she's a nurse. It's her job. <laughs> I know, but I think you have to be a special kind of nurse to decide to become a, an oncology nurse. Okay. Because, I mean, I guess you're probably losing a higher percentage of your, your patients, and uh, I think you have to have a lot of empathy to do that. And I'm glad there are such great people doing it. That was a sincere moment. What is going on here? Well, wait till I tell you about my neighbor taking a shit in the middle of the room. Hold the phone. <laughs> We're going to have to, like, rearrange the structure of the episode. Because you're going to have to tell us right now. Tell us about the shit in the room. Not quite now. I'll, I'll, get, I'll, I'll leave a little bit of suspense. Uh-huh. Over my three days in the hospital, I had three roommates. Uh huh. R- roommate number one was Walter Matthau, basically. Matthau. <laughs> he was sort of this grumpy, curmudgeon old guy who was kind of nice and would make these <laughs> funny jokes. And uh, he, I, I don't know what he had, but... He didn't really care about his problems because his wife was upstairs and she had some other problem. And he was just like, doesn't matter what's wrong with me. Fix her first. Aww. I'll take care of me later. So he has a quite nice Walter Matthau guy. But I didn't spend much time with him because by the end of the first day, he was let out. Day two, they lent me a patient for a while. Suddenly somebody was rolled in and they said, here, we're going to put him here for a while until we get him a room. And so it was this nice old man, except he was senile. And I mean, I, I, I don't want to, I'm not making fun of him, but we had the same conversation 10 times. All right. I kid you not. He would ask me the same questions, we'd get to the end, and then he'd sit there and suddenly start up again. And we had the same conversation 10 times. Was it an interesting conversation? Not really. <laughs> he thought, he, he kept uh, thinking we were in a different town to start off. He'd ask me if I knew so-and-so in the town, and I was like, no. And he said, how could you not know him? It's such a small town. And I was like... But I don't live here. He was like, then why are you in the hospital here? And I was like, well, that's not where we are. We're in Nishitel. And then he would look out the window and see the Xamax Stadium and be like, of course we're in Nishitel. I'm an idiot. <laughs> and then about five minutes later, he'd ask me, hey, do you know so-and-so? And the same conversation would happen again. <clears throat> so I felt, I mean, bad for him. And he was, uh, I, I didn't get exasperated. I stayed nice the whole time. But when you're in the hospital and you want sort of some peace and quiet, is a bit taxing to have to use your energy to have the same conversation 10 times. So is your personal version of 50 First Dates, the Adam Sandler romantic movie <laughs> about winning over the Drew Barrymore in the next bed? Exactly, exactly. Except he was more of a, of a John Barrymore type. So very dead. Pretty close. <laughs> so who was the third lucky guest? Well, the third lucky guest was an old man... When I walked in, I first thought, okay, he's not going to... He sort of just stared into the void. He looked like he might have been also a a few sandwiches short of a picnic. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Great expression. Yeah. And uh, he was sort of staring into the void, but then he did talk. I heard him talking on the phone a bit. And I I would say out of the probably, I don't don't know, I must have had 12 or 15 different neighbors since the beginning of my cancer. Mm -hmm. He's by far the worst. Oh, First, first of all, he made a lot of noise all the time. Was, he had a breathing machine sometimes, and I mean, I get it. It's a hospital. You have to do what you have to do. 
he had this horrible hacking cough where it sounded like he was trying to throw up or like, I don't know, give birth through his mouth or something. <laughs> it was pretty horrible. And then he couldn't use the bathroom really. So he had a chair in the room as a toilet. Ah, uh, okay. And he could actually get up himself and he'd sort of go into it and then use the toilet sitting there two meters away from me, looking at me. Nice. Having diarrhea. You. And imagine this being like day two of chemo and you're starting to get nauseous. You're not really hungry. And this happened around like right before dinner one day, that day. And it, I had to leave the room quite often because it was quite hard. Same thing, I woke up at midnight one night because there's this noise and it's him doing his business two meters away from me, the room stinking up. And I would put my mask on and be like, well, Philippe, we're going for a walk. Is this normal? Like, this sounds like an emergency at like a war hospital, not a normal <laughs> hospital in a, in a neutral, peaceful country. Yeah, I guess it is normal. I mean, you got to do what you got to poo. The nurses came in and sprayed some... Uh, I don't know, winter green or something every once in a while. Lucky for me. But it was kind of difficult. Didn't sleep much. Was kind of grossed out on top of having my, my uh, side effects. So, yeah, not, not the best experience. I did meet a, a nice guy on my numerous walks, though. Okay. There's Someone an, who didn't shit right in front of you? He did not. None of the times I met him. <laughs> but I met That's him I walked up. <laughs> Absolutely. And he had just had, I can't remember what he... What, Operation he had exactly, but he had had basically his stomach sewed up and had big staples in it. And uh, he was telling me, yeah, because of that, I'm only allowed to eat one third of uh, what I'm supposed to. And so I was like, how are you? And if it had been a movie, he would have grabbed me by the shirt and said, I'm dying of hunger. It's not pleasant at all. But so, uh, yeah, and the guy is quite funny because I guess often, I, I don't know, when I meet somebody at the hospital... My first question isn't like, what's wrong with you? Because I don't know, not everybody wants to talk about it. This guy immediately, like, I ran into him and we said hello. And then he was like, so what do you have? And he had already had cancer actually uh, a while ago. He had different cancer, but he said he made it back fine from that. It was quite impressive and uh, not to worry too much. And then this other person came who we first thought, because we saw him from behind, we both thought it was a large Bavarian woman. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a man. Fair. Much better to say, what do you have, than what's wrong with you? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, Luckily, on, on, on day three of my hospitalization, uh, my buddies came by to play petanque with me. In the room? No, we went outside, <laughs> which was a lot nicer. And none of them actually took a shit during the game, which was quite nice. <laughs> and they also didn't repeat the, the same conversation over and over, so it was kind of, kind of nice to, and refreshing to have some real people who knew how to like, contain their bowels. You have high standards of uh, what type of people you want to <laughs> be around. Yeah, I mean, they don't even have to be nice, actually. I just really like the whole keep your, your bowels in check when you're around me. Some might, some might call you uh, conservative in that respect, but you know. But so yeah, then I like, got out again on day four, had exactly the same thing as the, the two rounds before, sort of on day three, started feeling a bit under the weather, didn't really want to eat, came out on day four and, and wanted a, a Subway sandwich. Fair. So I went to eat a big fattening Subway sandwich and uh, went back to my folks' place for, uh, for a bit. Mm -hmm. And then basically lived life normally for two weeks. Of course, I've got to go get this, uh, my, my pick line is still in here in my arm. I got to go get the, the dressing changed every week. And I went to get that. And they always check it first to see how the, the flow is going. And it was completely blocked. Couldn't get anything in or out of it. Okay. Yeah, they were talking about maybe having to, if they couldn't solve it, have to install a second pick line in my other arm, which I wasn't thrilled about. But luckily, then they put a couple of milliliters of some kind of product in my arm. They said, go see your doc, because I had a meeting with my oncologist also. And when I came back down 30 minutes later, perfectly fine. So yes, hospital petank. Hey, we've, we already discussed that. My pick line was, uh, was blocked, but luckily it unblocked pretty quickly. Uh -huh. And so that was the first week. And then I had a scanner. 
Um, I went to have a scan because the idea was to, that was, was planned quite a bit beforehand after three rounds of chemo, have a scanner to see uh, how things were working because mm-hmm. they could be not working at all, in which case he'd have to try a stronger chemo. But in this case, I walked in and he was like, good news. And the way he said it, I didn't even realize he was talking about me. So I was like, oh yeah, what? And he was like, well, your results. I was like, oh, oh, my results. Oh, cool. And he was very happy. Everything got quite a bit smaller. The nodules in my, my lungs got uh, smaller. Even the stuff near my, my aorta, near my, my um, spine, uh-huh. which weren't really, that's not really what we were aiming for with this uh, chemo. They got smaller too. And the one in my, in my liver completely disappeared. Which is great. That is indeed great because there'll still be operations at some point, but that means there's already one less operation. They won't be operating on my liver. It's always a winner. Absolutely. And so uh, then his decision was, since I was responding so well to the chemo, to do one more round Mm -hmm. and then another scanner and then figure out what we're operating on in what order. And so that round four was uh, Monday, started Monday, which is two days ago. And it was, uh, so I went in Monday morning (coughs) with one little problem. Well, exactly that problem. I had an itchy (laughs) throat all weekend Uh and I... (coughs) <coughs> would cough quite a bit. Is it contagious over podcasts? Uh, possibly. <laughs> but so I had this itchy throat. I had done a COVID test, though. It wasn't COVID. Although I did go out to a wedding with 120 people between the COVID test and, uh, and uh, going to the hospital. Mm-hmm. I socially distanced from everybody, though, and, and was quite smart about it. But did have this cough all weekend, and... Uh, I said this to the nurse on the Monday. She said, oh, we'll see what happens. And then the doctor came in, not my oncologist. And uh, he looked. And so I had a very white tongue. So he thought it could be some kind of fungus. And uh, then my, my oncologist came by and he decided, well, we're not going to start the chemo today. We're going to sort of do a culture, see what's on your tongue, and start tomorrow. So I had a first day where I just did nothing. I was already hooked up to Philippe, so he fed me a, a liter of water over, over 24 hours. But I, other than that, I didn't have to do anything. I walked around the hospital. I had a room to myself, Great. which was quite nice. And then the next morning... <coughs> Method acting. I like it. Uh, the next morning, they had the results. Doc came back and said, yeah, we won't be starting chemo yet because you got to treat this first. Which is... So I was let out. Let out after 24 hours. It's, I think it's called oral thrush in England. In English. Oral thrush. Or as I like to say, we've got a fungus among us. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so then they sent me to the pharmacy to get like a truckload of drugs. Uh-huh. I've got a little pipette I've got to put in my mouth, a little milliliter of, of one thing every eight hours. I've got pills I've got to take. I've got five liters of mouthwash. <laughs> Well, not mouthwash, but like stuff I've got to gargle with 10 times a day. Okay. As soon as this is over, that's what I'm going to do. And I did it right before talking with you. Fair. But yeah, they, they, they could only, the pharmacist was a bit surprised and, and said he couldn't do anything about it. They could only give it to me in 10 half liter bottles. 10 half liter bottles. Although I'll probably be using one a day, a bottle. So uh, I don't drink it though. I spit it out. Yeah. Gargle, gargle. But it was surprising because my the doc when he when when I was in the hospital and the doc looked at my tongue and he was like, "How long does your tongue look like that?" And I was like, "Like what?" He said, "All white." I was like, "What do you mean, all white?" He said, "Come look." And I looked in the mirror and it was, I I've never seen it so white. Not like Caucasian, but, but like white, white. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But I guess I I don't look at my tongue very often. It would seem since I hadn't noticed that it had must have been there for a couple of days. Did they tell you how oral thrush uh, comes about? They said probably, basically, my immune system is uh, lower than usual because of the chemo. And that's the kind of thing that can happen. Okay. And let's say oral thrush almost sounds like something rude, like oral thrust. Well, thrush is already something very unpleasant that happens in the downstairs area. Uh, so that just means a, a mouth version of that. Isn't it also a Canadian rock band? Isn't it? Oh no, that's Rush. That's Rush. You you rushed into that joke too quickly. <laughs> well, that's what they say about fools, you know. Yes, they do rush in. Uh, yes, fool's errand. Hey, I'm nobody's fool, Bruce. So you also have sort of a dementia-like thing. No, 
Because you know the movie Nobody's Fool? Yes. Excellent movie. Bruce Willis, Paul Newman, Melanie Griffith. Exactly. And Bruce Willis has a dementia thing now. Well, I mean, if you look at his past 25 movies, you can kind of figure he must have had it to accept <laughs> to play in them. This is true. This is true. So now he's just going to die soft. It's sad, though, because I'm a, I'm a big Bruce Willis fan. I mean, die hard, die hard of the vengeance, all that shit. Mm-hmm. So it's sad uh, that we probably won't be getting many more Bruce Willis action movies. But I guess it is sort of nice that we won't be seeing so many shitty ones that we don't want to see. I mean, I don't actually watch them, but it is sort of sad every time you see a new DVD cover with Bruce Willis that looks terrible. He had eight movies in 2021. Well, yeah, they were all nominated for the Raspberry in the category Worst Bruce Willis Movie. But if you star in eight movies over the course of a year... That is a signal that you're not exactly making The Godfather. Exactly. I have the same hairstyle as him, though. So if they need to do Die Hard 5 or something, or do they do that? Die Hard 6, maybe. I don't know. They're in, I think they're in the double digits, like 42 or something. So apart from the fact that you look like the love child of a smooth seal and Bruce Willis, any other side effects? At the moment, not really. All right. I mean, I've got the cough, but that's not exactly a side effect. Otherwise... I expect when chemo starts again, I'll have the same thing. I'll get a little nauseous for a day or two, lose my appetite, feel a little tired, and then it'll get better. It won't last too long. Okay. Uh, do you sleep? I sleep quite a lot. Okay. I sleep quite... <coughs> but I like naps. I still go to sleep pretty late and uh, wake up, especially like this morning. I was tired, but I still woke up at 7 because that's... I guess because I was in the hospital yesterday, and that's when you wake up. Okay. But no, I, I sleep quite a bit. I... I, I've i got most of my energy, though, still. I guess a little bit less, but I go out and do stuff. For this afternoon, I'm going to meet my friends to play some petanc. Not at a hospital, which is equally nice. Up by the castle? Up by the castle, exactly. They'll probably find it funny, because they'll all be standing there with their beer. And I'll have my giant bottle of mouth stuff that I have to <laughs> gargle with every hour. <laughs> I was told I'm allowed to take it. I'm going to take it with a, like in a cool bag. You know, with a yeah, what you usually do to keep your beer cool, but just ah, that's my mouthwash. My, I mean, mouthwash. It's basically just water with salt and sodium uh, bicarbonate. Sounds tasty. Which I still every time I think oral thrust, which sounds like something, something that I, I don't know. Rude and crude. Yeah, something surrounding uh, the guy who exposed Watergate. <laughs> <laughs> um. If you know what I mean. Anywho, you might, you, maybe you can go online to like a Chinese website and find uh, mouthwash, beer-flavored mouthwash. I, yeah, I'm not sure I'd want that because then I'd want to swallow it instead of spit it out. Maybe it'll rinse your insides in a positive way. It'll be like a colonic. It's surprising th- since you've left. Because, I mean, I'm allowed to drink alcohol. I'm mm-hmm. not supposed to go over it. I think since you left, I had... Because we, we had some alcohol while you were here. Not huge amounts, but... Probably more than I have in most weeks. I think since then, I've had like two beers and two glasses of wine and a Cosmo. Oh. And that was all this morning. <laughs> I was going to say that sounds like a classy early afternoon for me. <laughs> but then again, you have the cancer card. And uh, yeah, now as I went out for dinner before going back to my chemo, which never was. I went back out to that nice restaurant we went with you, the Cardinal. Uh-huh. Had a huge meal again. None of us got cheese cancer though. Didn't we have a conversation about you being uh, under the weather because of cheese recently? No, well, 10 days ago I was under the weather. I don't think it was because of cheese, though. Maybe I'm just trying to tell myself that that had to be the reason because I can't be the only man in history who went down because of cheese. Oh, I doubt you are. I doubt you are. I am a cheesy man, though, so it could, could be true. Yes, you are, Richard. Richard. Yeah, there's a singer, a lounge singer, Richard Cheese. You don't know him? <laughs> No. He's excellent. He does excellent cover. Richard Cheese, or, or uh, I guess for short, Dick Cheese. Yes. I, I thought that's where you were going. <laughs> that's not where I was going. That's where he was going. <laughs> no, he's great. You should look him up, though. Richard Cheese. He does lounge versions of, like, Nirvana and Rage Against the Machine. Like like Las Vegas lounge versions <laughs> that are really quite good. Uh, there's there's a lot of dad jokes in there. By the way, I heard, I, I, I heard po- possibly the best dad joke I've ever heard yesterday. Go ahead, shoot. I was out with two buddies, and he even said it in, in English. I mean, he's Norwegian, but he had to say the joke in English. He said, 
when does a joke become a dad joke? When it's a parent. The punchline is a parent. <laughs> Yes. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's very funny. It is funny. Not, not as funny when you know the punchline. Well, yeah. But yes, I enjoyed it. I always know the punchline and I never pretend I don't. I'm a, I'm a dick. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's yeah, You told me that you do that with your friend's kids. Exactly. My friend's kids love telling me jokes. They're always really excited. And they're like, hey, what's uh, whatever. And then I'm like, this. And I know every answer. <laughs> they're, always, they're always very disappointed. But they're well, not very disappointed. Then they're, they're extremely happy when they find one that I don't know. I was there when they said a bunch of jokes. I can't remember any, any of them because I was drinking rum at the time. And they were saying the jokes in French. Yeah, but you translated some of them. That's true. So you're basically, you're preparing for, or you're in the middle of round four. Exactly. Of... I've got now another 10 days off, so to speak. So this is episode four. Five. Of season, episode five. No, no, not, not. This is episode four of season two of your chemo. Oh, that's true. Not, not that, that, that's true. And episode five of season two of the podcast. Yes. We're ahead of the chemo. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So we, we're doing a flash forward like in Lost. Yes. We know everything that's going to happen. So if you want next week's lotto numbers, just call. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. So then it's uh, operation time. And Sometime in May, I'm hoping. And, uh, and, and then a party to celebrate one year of my cancer. Yes. Like, I want to make a, a ball, get someone to make me a ball-shaped cake. Or a having a ball cake, I don't quite know. Either, a, either a, like, anatomically correct testicle cake. Ooh. I could, so a tiny cake. <laughs> little cupcakes. Little, <laughs> uh -uh. Wouldn't that be nice? I don't know. I mean, something with maybe only serve spherical foods. Yes. Like hors, hors d'oeuvres. Exactly. In the shape of, like, a scotch egg. A scotch egg and little tomatoes with little balls of mozzarella and, uh, <coughs> I don't Meat, know. Meatballs, obviously. Meatballs and... The Brazilian cheese balls, they're great. Brazilian cheese balls that we had in Switzerland, you mean? We did. We did, we did that's indeed. true. There'd be lots of, there's lots of spherical kind of foods. If there's anything I haven't thought of that, that, that our viewers think you would... Okay, what would you serve at a testicular cancer meal? <laughs> Party. Party. Remember, keep it festive, keep it light. Any suggestions, recipes, uh, um, I'm, I'm up for. And don't just say like Brussels sprouts, because we want <laughs> something fun. Ball based. Just think of it as, a, as an assignment in making a coherent dish with uh, <laughs> flavors that work together a starter, a main, some additional balls. Exactly. And uh, the person with the, worst, uh, with the worst suggestion can pack his knives and go. So if we get like a really cool menu, uh, we can make like a film about that. I'll come down. We'll get some chef people to cook some cool ball food. I already know. I already have at least one chef who I, I'm 100% would go balls to the walls with that kind of idea. <laughs> that sounds balltastic. Maybe having a ball will be like a, like a food supplier after this. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's true. If you sell... If they, if like, I don't know, one percent of the proceeds of all spherical foods went to testicular cancer research, I probably wouldn't have cancer. I'm just imagining the commercials. Having a meatball. <laughs> <laughs> having a our good friend Ori might enjoy having a matzo ball. <laughs> but so yeah, any suggestions? Because we always like it when people do. Uh, uh, write comments to us, of course. Chocolate salty balls from uh, South Park. I, yeah, I know that. Yeah, no, I was just telling them. They know that. I can see how smart they look today's audience. It's not the same idiots who were watching last week. <laughs> <laughs> These guys look like a bunch of clever dudes and dudettes. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. So send us your, your ball shaped, or even it doesn't have to be ball shaped if you have anything else. If it's tumor shaped, go for it. If you have any yes. ideas that you would serve at someone's cancer, testicular cancer birthday party, send them to me and maybe you'll get an invite. Also, if you have made stuff <laughs> like this and you have pictures, send us pictures. We yes. can add it on the show. We can make like a top five list. We can do a Letterman thing. The best foods shaped like your balls at number five. That would be funny. But don't send us pictures of your actual balls because we don't want that. No. Nah. No. Nah. Although you are carrying around a fake testicle at all times, which looks, let's face it, gross. That's true. I don't have it next to me right now, which is, which is strange. 
<laughs> you feel empty. Yes. And hollow. I have a feeling this is we're getting to the end of this thing, maybe. What do you think? Because it's weird because if we have any viewers slash listeners who made it all the way through, then in the beginning they probably were like, oh, there's a lot of talk about cancer. But now we went off the rails. <laughs> Absolutely. And they're like, oh, there's a lot of talk about food. All right, so that's that's good. I I um I hurt myself pretty badly yesterday. When you were drunk? No, I was sober. It was in the middle of the day. I was driving those uh, uh, scooters, the electrical yeah. thingies, uh, down a hill, and then all of a sudden the the front wheel fell off. And it was really weird because I was midair at twenty five kilometers an hour, hurtling towards concrete. And I had the time in the air to think two options. Either one, I'm going to land and break a lot of bones and lie there. It's going to be fucking painful. Or two, if I land somewhat normally, this will be awkward. So I have to get up right away, even though there weren't any people there. It was like a 14-year-old girl, I'm embarrassed kind of vibe. And then I smashed into the ground. And before I even had the time to think about it, I was back up and I was walking sort of like nobody saw that. And then it was only when I got about 100 meters further ahead, I was noticing that blood was pouring from several locations on my body. That's like in the movies. My pants were ripped up. There was blood pouring from both knees. I was bleeding from my finger profusely. I came up to like a, like a deli. At, for, at, I was ready to ask them for a napkin. And they were just basically just, they saw me coming from a mile away, opened the door, went out with a bunch of napkins and said, Something along the lines of, hey, please survive. And I was like, yeah, doing my best. Still, not as bad as cancer. Yes, that was the point. <laughs> that was the point. That was... Uh... <laughs> I don't know if I said it, by the way, uh, because several people listen to this podcast and they ask me, how do you sleep? Like, do you sleep? You, not me, you. Yeah, me, me. Because we know you have sleeping problems or you've... Yes, but I started sleeping again in Switzerland while I was visiting you. Because since Switzerland, I have slept. Oh, you know, it's I thought it would be just during your holiday. It's continued at home, too. I think, uh, not to sound like a pissant uh, weirdo, I think I was lying in, because when I was in Switzerland, I was sleeping in your brother's old room, which, which is next to your room in your parents' uh, house. And I think I was lying there awake in the middle of the night thinking, well, Joe is in the next room full of cancer, and what's my excuse? And I think I, I just said that to myself, and I fell asleep. And after that, I've, I've slept. So I used your cancer to sleep again. Well, I'm very glad that I cured your insomnia. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's, that's thank no, you for that's, that. that's very good to hear, though. I'm, I'm glad about that. Now we just have to do something about your idiocy, and then we'll be good. My ability to be upright on a, an electrical scooter, even with one wheel. That'd be pretty hard. But to get back slightly to the cancer, just remember all our, all our viewers, everybody. Check yourselves, touch yourselves, grope yourselves with consent. And uh, like, share, subscribe. Actually, this is, might be cancer related. The other day, or like two weeks ago, I felt a lump in my chest, in the middle of my chest, like a small lump. Uh -huh. And then, and if, when I push in on it now, there is a lump there. And I asked my dad, I was like, can you feel my, uh, my cancer lump in my chest? And he said, he felt it. And he was like, that's a fat ball, you fat boy. <laughs> I don't know if it's called a fat ball, but in Norwegian it's called. But you're definitely lump. called a fat boy. That's, that's true. <laughs> That's true. It's almost as good as little Dicky, little Dicky. Yeah. So, <laughs> fat boy, fat ball. So I started working out after that. <laughs> Are there specific uh, exercises just targeted on this area here to get rid of your fat ball? Yeah, I'm, I'm wearing a push-up bra, so my man tits will hide the fat ball. Although it just looks like I have three tits, like in Total Recall. But if you have a something, a lump. Maybe it's a fat ball, maybe it's not. So if, unless your dad's a doctor, get it checked out. Yes, definitely. Balls, apart from the two normal ones you're supposed to have, uh, if you're a man, uh, then balls are not a good thing. Exactly. Unless it's food-related, 
when it's great. And remember to send us those food-related ball ideas. Joseph uh, Edward uh, Barnes uh, the first. It was, uh, as always, a pleasure speaking to you. Indeed it was. I can now go gargle away my stuff and play, play some balls. Bulls. All right. Très bien. Merci beaucoup. Uh, au revoir. À bientôt. Oui, oui. <laughs> There we go.